Spoon. Hello, Spooksters. It's been way too long. Welcome back to Spirit and Law. This is episode five, and before we begin, I'd like to tell you this is a guest episode. It includes two special guests, and the topic that we're going to be covering today is witches. I hope you enjoy it, and as always, tell me what you think. And feel free to follow us on Twitter at Spirit and Law. Right, let's get started. So I'm here with Chelsea and Elaine and we are basically going to be talking about witches today and some witches are here with me in spirit. So who should we start with first? Okay, when, when did you first, like, when did you first know you had something that was a little bit, you know, intuitive and stuff? I I think I've always felt like that when I was little. I always knew I was a little different. My mom would always tell me I have little friends that I would play with, more or less spirits or ghosts in the house. So I was always playing alone. Okay, did anyone question it? Or were you just like, oh, these are my imaginary friends? Well, my mom's like more, she, oh God, she's more, uh, more accepting and more open to it. She actually was really intrigued by it when she was in high school and wanted to go to college for it which is very surprising but yeah she i don't know she's always been more um happy and more pushy when it comes to that because she always tells you have a gift you have a gift you need to use it you need to help people and i'm just like "Mm, no i'm good (laughs) (laughs) i'm fine thanks yeah like i'm just gonna suppress everything and act like it doesn't happen like i want to be normal i'm good (laughs) so so how long did you like be like this is fine this is fine i've never really felt like it was fine i've just been more like okay with it i guess as i got older so i'm like this is this is gonna be my normal life now i might as well just accept it (laughs) So, like, have you had any weird experiences oh, growing up? A lot. <laughs> I have a lot of ghost <laughs> stories. <laughs> Chelsea knows. <laughs> have you had any really crazy ones, which actually, for a second, like, actually make you realize, oh, okay, this must be not, I can't explain this experience? <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> My favorite one that I've experienced and my childhood friend actually saw it too. We were outside playing, you know, like eight, nine year olds do after school. And uh, I was running towards them and I something told me to stop. So I stopped and then I thought I heard my mom yell for me. So I turned around and my mom wasn't even at the door. So I'm like, okay, I'm just hearing stuff. So I turned back around and I see this woman <laughs> standing in front of me like she's not really on the ground but I didn't like associate it with her like actually like floating like I just thought it was just like this woman that's just like walking down the street and she just like she was mumbling something but I couldn't hear and I was just what did you do then I just stood there and I'm like looking at her like we're looking each other in the eyes and I'm just staring at her I'm like what are you saying like I don't understand and so then she held out her hand to me well, that, so you were just kind of having like a stare off with a spirit, do you think? Yeah. And then um, my friend called my name and like I looked and then I ran to her and the, like the lady was like completely gone. Yeah. Like nobody brought it up until like I did like maybe like a year or two later. And she's like, yeah, I saw it too. That's why I called. That's why I called your name. I was scared that like something's going to happen. I didn't have a good feeling about it. And I'm like, I, okay. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, I guess. <laughs> now how about you chelsea what what is your experience being because i know it's all been quite new in maybe would you say about a year or two uh no not even (laughs) no no um what right before halloween wasn't it elena when i was like i texted you guys like i think i'm a witch I feel like I'm an empath, all this other stuff. And I'm like, you might be a witch. And she's like, no, I'm not a witch. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> So she sends me all these videos and she's like, watch these. <laughs> and you're like, I haven't got time for that. 
So I watched them and I'm like, I have every one of those. <laughs> Did you just carry on like sipping your tea then? Like, hmm. Hmm. I was like, hmm, I guess that's a thing. <laughs> like there's like for me, there's no like cool story of realization. <laughs> it was like one day I was like, huh. I notice I'm overwhelmed when I'm with a bunch of people and the emotions are running high. Yeah. Something's not right. <laughs> and Elena's like, hmm, sounds like you're an empath. <laughs> yeah, um, what is that? And I was like, what's that? <laughs> so, started Googling and I fell down a rabbit hole and I couldn't get out of it. And Oh god, here now you're here. <laughs> I don't know how many mornings she texts me at like three or four in the morning telling me she fell down a rabbit hole and I'm like, girl, get some sleep. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. <laughs> did you just keep going down the rabbit hole? Yeah, I did. It was never ending. That's good though, because now you two, I believe, have a coven? A two witch coven. <laughs> this is weirder. It's nothing special. <laughs> because when me and her practice together, it's shit gets crazy. It does. Well, what happens? I'd love to know. Tell me some stories, some experiences. Do you want to talk about Samhain? Oh, yes, please. That's the okay, most interesting Samhain, thing. If nobody knows what Samhain is, it's a um, Wiccan pagan holiday, the Day of the Dead. It's Halloween for layman terms. Um. And the veil is supposed to be very thin to where you can communicate with your ancestors, the dead, anybody you want. Um, And this was my first time practicing, Mm -hmm. uh, like, ritualistic work. Like, I think Elaine had done one Samhain before me. Yes, I've only celebrated Samhain once the year, oh, I think it was two years ago, and then last, not last year, but the year before, I took a day off. I don't know why I didn't celebrate it. I think I was just going through stuff, so I'm just like, you know what? I don't need to do it today. And, well, I honestly had no idea what I was doing, so I kind of, like, let her take charge of everything, because I was like, I'm a baby witch, and I don't know what's happening. (laughs) And... Oh God, we were what were we doing? The we were doing like the prayers and the tarot card spreads and all these weird messages started coming through and Aaron's mom came in. <laughs> yeah, she uh she passed away ten years ago. Yeah. So it was when- it was odd because I obviously never met her and it's just, I don't know, I just, the way he described her, I mean, like, she's very easygoing in that, but she's very protective of him. Mm. So was I was, it like, like a, short. Was it, like, an image or a message? How, how did it come through, in a sense? I just, I know what she looks like, so it's not, like, a blindsided thing, so I kind of, like, she was kind of there in, like, a mist form before she actually became solid to me, but she came through the cards and needed a message needed me to pass a message from her to Aaron. Okay. And your uh, your grandpa came through. My grandpa came through, which I did see him. He basically told you, <laughs> stop being so hard on yourself and deal with it. <laughs> always. He always told me I'm stressed out all the time. So, I mean, like, it's nothing. I always get the cards always tell me I need to chill. I need to take a step back. I need to breathe. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. I just don't do it. I don't know why. It's because you are, you can be, like, very, like, overly sensitive and easily stressed out. Oh, always. Are you kidding me? I'm stressed out right now. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, I don't know, I had some weird messages come through, and we were asking questions about people that used to be in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, that was... uh... And it was, like, a warning that said, don't do it. Let them go, let them be. Okay. And, like, I mean, it went, and the cards even, like, went as far. I think we used my deck. Was it mine? I can't remember. Or, no, it was yours, wasn't it? Because I didn't have mine yet. Um, It went as far as to even say, like, you can't even do banishment on this person. It'll come back on you. Wow. 
Okay, so that's pretty strong <laughs> on that person. And we were like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> because ironically, that person had been texting the both of us wanting to, like, re-enter our lives. Lives and stuff. That must be weird, though, like, when things start to match up like that. Like, text messages or do you two get dreams as well? Elena more than I do. I don't get very prophetic dreams, but I think it's because I'm such a deep sleeper that I don't remember my dreams. And I've tried everything for remembering. Like, I, I have one of those blue calcite that's supposed to help you, and none of that's helped me remember. But Elena has some pretty prophetic dreams, I think. Oh, God. Which, well, like, what kind? Like, just message ones that I've gotten? Oh, um, I think it's the one she's talking about. It's probably about my, uh, when I had a dream about my grandpa, my uncle, and my grandma on my dad's side. Um, I just, oh, God. I don't really dream about my grandma that much now after my, gr my grandpa and my uncle passed away. So it was kind of odd having her in my dream. But she seemed, like, very frantic and worried about something. And uh, my uncle and my grandpa came in. And the way they looked was very alarming. Because usually whenever I have a dream, they look before they passed away. Like, they look normal, healthy, whatever. And uh, I noticed outside there was a storm coming. And my, my, gra my grandpa and my uncle was like, oh, someone, like, it's not going to be that big of a deal if you can catch it in time. It was like basically telling me like someone's sick and like I don't know like if they don't catch in time they could die which yeah I've had dreams like that before like um when my before my grandma passed away her husband came to one of my dreams he's like I'm coming home soon I'm coming home soon which I'd never had a dream about him before so it caught me really off guard and then I think a year or two later she passed away um, that was after, it was like shortly after she passed away, she called and it was like this payphone thing in my living room and I'm just like, why is this here? And I called, like I answered it and she's like, I'm coming home soon. And I'm like, what do you mean you're coming home soon? She's like, I, don't worry about it. Everything will be okay. I'm coming home soon. And I'm like, okay. And then a few years later, my grandpa passed away and then his wife passed away. Um, yeah, because I'm not... You're not, you're never prepared for something like that. Because you don't always understand, like, oh, what do you mean you're coming home? But now whenever I hear it, I am associated with someone's going to pass away soon. And I don't like that. I don't like holding that feeling. Like, I know, but I don't know who it is. Well, that sounds like the worst. So, like, if you did know, would you, would you warn them or what would you do? Well, um, with the last dream that I had about my grandpa, my uncle, and my grandma, I texted my Aunt Debbie, because after talking to Chelsea about it, I'm like, I feel like it's one of them. Like, yeah. one of them are sick. Well, I texted her. Her and my uncle both had a um, bronchitis, mm. which my grandpa was uh, telling me is something with the lungs or the heart. And it was like, the... well, I Googled, yeah, which I Googled it because it, he said something with the left lung, and I'm just like, like hard breathing it can like stop your heart which I didn't like I don't know anything medical but I texted her and I told her and then she told me my dad was sick which I don't okay. have a, I don't have the best relationship with them so I didn't text him to ask him if he was okay which sounds kind of crappy but um which he yeah yeah um yeah, whole another story. <laughs> but he was sick, and I know, I think it was maybe two years ago, he got really sick and he almost passed away. Okay. And then um, a few days later, my sister ended up having a dream that it was my dad who had a heart attack and he did pass away. Oh, so your sisters have the dreams as well then, do they? Yeah, well, I think that was the first time because um, my uncle was telling me in my dream that, like, he needs to talk to my sister, but she won't let him through. And I tell, oh, I asked, okay. yeah, I'd never had that happen before. So I asked my sister and she, I asked her if she's ever had a dream about my uncle and she said no. But the crazy thing is when I had the dream about my, um, someone being sick, she had a dream about my grandpa. Yeah. So I didn't know if, like, he was, like, telling her or trying to and then just couldn't get a message across because my uncle wasn't there. Mm. So it was definitely a little alarming 
but she's had the dream, I think a few times now, that my dad was in the hospital and we had to travel down to Dayton in Ohio, you know, and just try to be there for my aunt. That sounds like, it sounds hard to deal with because obviously, do you know sometimes, because sometimes I've had dreams which have happened, but then I'm like, some dreams I have warnings that don't happen. So how do you kind of tell if a dream might be a warning or not a warning, you know? It could be a waiting game, honestly, because the spirit world and our time are completely different. Like Chelsea knows, it's like completely different. I'd like to, uh, could you tell me more about that either Chelsea or Elaine? spirits don't have a timetable while we do is basically all I could say like they'll be like oh this is gonna be soon soon to them could be 10 years down the road (laughs) and for us that's like no that's soon is tomorrow (laughs) it's just whenever I hear soon I think it's gonna be from a year to two years years. okay yeah it's it's not the same Thirty days from the yeah, like, yeah. It's it's a completely different like time scale. Yeah, yeah. It's very tricky when you want to know something. So how how does everyone around both of you like think about you being a witch? Um, when I first came out as a witch, it was shortly after I came out as bisexual. So my family is. I shouldn't say, like, all my, not my entire family isn't like this, but they're more of a, they're very Catholic, which shows right there how they're going to think of me as, but um, at the time, I was with one of my closest friends, Um, he said that he was a witch, too, and uh, they told, they wouldn't say it to my family, but they was like, oh, he's a Satanist, he's is because he's gay and he's a witch and all this other stuff and this is before they even knew that I was bisexual and a witch so I'm looking at them like oh so you see me as that like you see me as a satanist which I mean there's nothing wrong with being a satanist yeah like nothing at all but it's just like for them it's bad if you yeah, if like you don't anything to do with tarot cards or stuff like that is you're a big devil demons word. how dare yeah. you <laughs> exactly like you're sacrificing goats you know yeah you're just, like, you're having blood rituals in the bathroom and <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'm just like no that's not what it is at all and then i have cousins who've asked me for help for protection spells and to help like keep people away from them and i'm just like yeah i can do it but the thing is like is that how you think of me as so like do you just do you see my practice as like white or do you see it as like dark because I'm not I don't practice hexes or anything so I'm just like I'm just here to have a good time (laughs) (laughs) essentially yeah I know Chelsea's a little more quieter when it comes to that kind of stuff especially with her family because I'm sure she doesn't want to stir up anything but me I don't care (laughs) (laughs) like oh yeah I remember the I remember the cake that Chelsea told me back a while back about. <laughs> oh, the the coming out cake. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. glorious. Yes, uh, it was a very hot mess, but it was very... <laughs> we need to remake it to where it's, like, proper looking. Yeah, and not since I know just... how to bake now. Yeah, I'm very good at baking now, so... Yeah. That's good. <laughs> My mom was not very fond of the cake. She, she thought it was I just a joke. I loved it, personally. Oh yeah, it was very it was very bright and rainbowy and yeah, my it, mom it was looked in... fabulous. It it looked really good. I thought it was <laughs> great, but yeah, I just I don't know, my mom my mom just wasn't happy about it, which I mean, <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, she th- at first she thought it was a huge joke. She was like, "Yeah, it's funny." And I'm just like, "Are you not getting what's actually on the cake?" And she just looked at me and then she was like, she just didn't say anything. She didn't, we didn't talk for three days after that. So I mean, wow. it it at least it wasn't like when you told me everything because this is like even before like I was a witch and I didn't know it. Like I didn't know she was bisexual at the time. She took like takes me out to eat and she's like, I gotta tell you something. And I'm like, Oh my god, this is so serious. Like, what are we gonna do? Like, is she pregnant? Like that was like my first <laughs> thought is like she's pregnant and. <laughs> So we're at Chili's, like, waiting for our food, and I'm struggling because, okay, 
Mind you, I can't figure out where my straw is, and I'm so <laughs> thirsty that I'm, like, dying. And she goes, Chelsea, I gotta tell you something. And I go, okay. And I'm fiddling, trying to get this, like, figure out where my straw is. And she goes, I'm bisexual. And I go, okay, that's great, but where is my straw? I need it right now. <laughs> yeah, and that's when I told her, it's with your silverware. And, <laughs> and she goes, oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then I was like, yeah, I kind of knew you were bi, but I need this lemonade, thanks. Yeah, she (laughs) was... I was really chill about it, I didn't care. No, you didn't. And it it was really surprising when people were like, oh, you finally came out, and I'm just like, what? What? (laughs) (laughs) Like, you've known me for this long, and you couldn't tell me, like, hey, I think you're this. Instead of just like, oh, you know, it's clicking. But that's the thing, though, is that you have to figure it out for yourself. I knew how I felt towards girls, but I didn't know there was a word for it until I met uh, our mutual friend. You know who I'm talking about, so. But, yeah, that's that story, but, and she was like, also, I'm a witch, and I was like, okay. Yeah, at the time, Chelsea didn't know what a witch meant. I really didn't know anything about it. I was just like, oh, okay. Like, I thought witches and Wiccans were all the same, and I was like, oh, so you're just, like, gonna do, like, like ritual stuff all the time okay <laughs> I, I was really people. uneducated okay <laughs> yeah I mean it's fine I didn't really know I just when I came to realization that I was a witch I'm like okay so cool I'm a witch now what <laughs> now now what that should be a book I'm a witch now what <laughs> no well there you go there's a ne- there's my next book topic <laughs> so how do you think people do view witches nowadays do you think people are just like oh that's cute. Oh god. I don't think they take it as serious no, because anymore. It's become an aesthetic thing. Um like, you know how mermaids and like fairies were like a thing a couple years ago? Like there was like mermaid makeup palettes and things like that. Yeah. Now it like witches become an aesthetic. It's there's there's like witch makeup, there's witch this, there's witch clothes you can get where you have the aesthetic of it. And I'm like I wish people understood that witches don't dress like that. They just dress like normal people. (laughs) We don't don't wear all black all the time. (laughs) Okay, now I can vouch for that. I wear almost all black all the time. I don't. That's just because it's me. (laughs) I wear flannel and I wear jeans and I wear tennis shoes. And that's how I practice. (laughs) I'd rather be comfortable than in this stuffy little ritual outfit than... (laughs) A little yeah, outfit. I mean, some of them wear robes, yeah. which I mean, like, go for it, you know. But I'm not gonna do that, especially when it's hot out in the summertime. Oh God, no! You gotta go. <laughs> you gotta go celebrate. Uh, celebrate. Uh, what is it? Beltane out in the sunlight. Uh, you, you gotta be kidding me. Or, I already struggle in the sunlight. I don't need to be in a robe for it. Or Lamis, you'd be out in the heat. No, get out of here. I, I think it's so good because you're so you're both so chill about it it's like you know what we're just the everyday witch basically <laughs> you don't need no fancy robes you don't you don't need over the top stuff i mean there just... are people that are like quote unquote witch snobs out there that are like you're not doing this right and you're just like see and that's mm. where the natural <laughs> witch comes in at yeah that's a traditional Being a natural witch, witch like, you don't need to have all this fancy stuff. Use your what sur- what your surroundings are. Yeah, like like if you don't have a glass bowl <laughs> for your moon water or something. Like, yeah, you just some of these people with their like you need to get a silver bowl and set it out in the moonlight at exactly eleven p.m. and take it back inside at six a.m. before the sun rises. I am sleeping. <laughs> Who wants to be up at I am 6 not setting just an alarm to get water from outside? For this water. <laughs> I put it in a Gatorade bottle and I sit it on my windowsill. That's how I make moon water. <laughs> hey, it works, it works. It does. I mean, for my cal- for my cauldron, I use a little small baking dish. Yeah. There's been yeah, why of, not? You there's know? There's lots of fires in that dish. <laughs> I've also burnt my mom's... Uh, cloth table for halloween oh ruined it but you know, <laughs> no big deal <laughs> if you practice witchcraft and to anybody listening um there will be a lot of accidental melting issues or accidentally <laughs> oh God, setting yourself on fire in some way shape or form 
<laughs> they're probably cringing at what we're saying, <laughs> to be honest. But let's be honest. If I'm like, oh my god, these are not witches. These are something, but they're not it. Because <laughs> I can vouch for at least some witches out there. Because like I'm in a lot of like Facebook groups that talk about witchcraft and everything like that. I-, I know for a fact somebody is at least accidentally like almost singed their hair accidentally <laughs> because of all the candles. <laughs> I have can, done it. I burn my finger. Well, okay. I burn my finger literally every single time we have yeah, you, a whisper roll going on. I almost singe my hair off. You burn your finger. Somebody gets <laughs> injured some way. Because <laughs> we mess with fire. It, just, it and happens. That's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> or we can't get the fire to go and they're like, what are we, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean. So you said about... Um, Witch snobs earlier. Yes. Um, could you tell me about some experiences with people <sighs> that might be snobs or people that maybe put a bad name on what sh- what this craft is exactly? <laughs> or fake witches? Oh god. Yeah. All of it. Tell me about it, both of you. Witch snobs, in my opinion, are people who think traditional witchcraft is the only practice and the only way, and people fail to realize that. Witchcraft is personal. It's not a religion. It's not. It's not Wiccan. Wiccan is totally different than witchcraft. It's a. It's a religion. It. Witchcraft is not a religion. It's. It's a craft. It's a practice. It's putting forth like your wants and manifestations, like putting it out into the universe so you can get it back. Um, okay. There's people <laughs> out there that think you need these perfect rituals and every tool in the world and you need a silver bowl and you need that knife and you need this and you need eight candles of eight each different color no you don't you really don't me and elena when we practice we're sitting there eating food (laughs) around the table lighting candles and going what the fuck is next i forget (laughs) Yeah, even with the burger shadows in front of us, and yeah, it's just it's not it's not this perfect like moonlit ritual that happens outside in the moonlight every single day. Like it's not like that. It's just it's usually just if you practice alone, you practice alone. Like like when I do my solitary stuff when I'm not with Elena, like I have my dopey little candles and my insets burning with my diffuser going too and a lot of times I'll just sit and meditate and you know ask for guidance in my life or you know things like that or if we're doing rituals together it's usually we're asking for like our ancestors for help and um or just celebrating them in general and and celebrating life yeah and like trying to put more positive influences and positive karma in our life it's not this big to do where you're like you need to wear a white dress on this day and you need to wear a black dress on this day and a yellow dress on I don't have time for all that I don't have time (laughs) I don't have time to get these big magic spell candles like I'll use a birthday candle because it goes fast sorry that's how I practice (laughs) because I don't have time to wait six hours for a candle to burn out. Birthday candles burn out in like 10 minutes. Spell's done. Spell's done. And, you know, and then, and then the opposite end of that are the people that are like, oh, I'm a witch too. And you're like, no, the fuck you aren't. (laughs) What do you mean you are a witch? You're not. (laughs) These people that wear driftwood and try to tell me it means this when it doesn't. (laughs) oh i have more stories to tell you about that one. Oh my god yeah i need to hear them because girl <laughs> yeah she there's there's people in the world that are like i'm a witch and i'm a sensitive and i'm this and i'm that and i'm like no you're not <laughs> because you have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> There are some basic things, like, with witchcraft that are just basic, that basic knowledge that everybody knows. Well, I mean, anybody could be a witch. Yeah, technically, but if you're- But it's special to be a natural witch. Yeah. 
but also being educated on the fact of what each thing is. Like, don't tell me you're a witch, but then when I correct you on something, like, oh, you can't use a white candle for that. You can use a white candle for anything. White candle is the substitute color of any colored candle. Do not argue with me. I've looked this up. <laughs> like, that's the thing, is, like, you know, for people who were, like, quote-unquote broom closeted, which is, yeah. like, they haven't come out, a lot of them have, like, mini altars, and a lot of them carry little white candles that they can do their ritualistic work and stuff like that, because they can't carry around, oh, you need an orange candle for this, and you need a blue one for that, and... That is too much shopping. It is. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> to, to go out and be like, okay, I'm trying to do one ritual, I need an orange candle, I need blood of uh, ow or something i need a little bit of this a little bit of hair here and a little yeah. bit of sage yeah, it's hair it's very stressful doing it like that that's why you usually when um you go shopping for it you just get everything that you're gonna need eventually yeah, you just bulk it you just bulk it up the best place to get stuff though is like craft stores or the dollar oh, yeah. tree everything's like in the same area too like the oils and candles literally same area and, and i you wish always... i had those shops here like loads of them have shut down now like loads of those kind of shops have shut down so <laughs> trying to find stuff and you then you ask someone stores? about it we do have some but like we just have like charity shops nowadays and oh. hairdressers so it's like can i have some hair please <laughs> can i have some hair please is <laughs> 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 See, if we need hair for a spell, we're lucky because my hair is so thick, I can just usually just pull some of my hair out. And I'm like, oh, we good. <laughs> you know, honestly, if we ever needed hair, I'll just get it from Aaron because he sheds all so the time. So do I. <laughs> but anyway. Like, after he leaves, he just leaves balls of hair everywhere. And I'm just like, this isn't mine because I was like, I don't really have any hair. My hair is very short. <laughs> so I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> yep. <laughs> You mentioned earlier one of your friends had like a dark kind of energy and um, you told me previously about an experience. I'd love to hear more about that dark energy he had. I think he had a very uh, dark presence in his house. I didn't, I did not like being in there alone, which they left me alone in there while they were chasing each other down the street one, during the summer for whatever reason. And I just remembered I was standing at the door because I was like I'm not going any further in this house like I'm not like I'm not gonna do that and I just felt watched and I felt this like large man standing behind me and I'm like this isn't good and I think that night was the night where he literally, literally almost killed everyone. Oh the car story? <laughs> yeah I'm pretty sure that was it it was the same night. When you called me after that I was like get out of there I didn't, I still don't know what, what happened. Like, I'm so shocked about it, and it happened, like, four years ago. Four or five years ago. Basically, the story was, is that Elena, um, what should we name this other girl? Beth. Elena, Beth, and Jeff were all in a car together. Okay. And Jeff was driving, and a semi was coming from the opposite lane on the road yeah we got on the highway because uh he, what you there's call a, a little, motorway like, nature. what you call a motorway <laughs> yeah there's a there's a little um nature area where you can drive back to and you could go night fishing we used to go back there all the time just like you know talk or whatever and uh he was like oh let's go we were at walmart and he's like oh let's go and it was like the mood shift after he said that and me and Beth were in the back seat. We actually had another friend with us, and he rode in the front seat with uh, Jeff. So Jeff decided to go on the highway, and he noticed he saw the semi. And like when we were merging on, the semi was not going to get over. And I'm like, I'm yelling at him, like, "Hey, there's a car. You need to like slow down." He's like, "No, we'll be fine. We're gonna we're gonna make it." And I remember that smirk on his face. Tell about the eyes, though. Oh, that was after. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah no, when we got to, um, it's the little place is called Willow's Point. We got there and he turned, Jeff turned to our friend that was sitting next to him in the front seat. He goes, I could kill you out here and nobody would know. They wouldn't find your body. 
And me and Beth just, like, like he's laughing. Like, our other friend's, like, laughing about it. Like, he's trying to play it off cool. And me and Beth are in the backseat, like, holding each other, trying not to, like, cry. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're sitting there. And then, like, we were even at Willow's Point for, like, not even, like, five minutes. And we left. And on the way back into town, he turned on the radio, which on the drive there, it was nothing but silence, which is odd for him because he always plays music. Yeah, because he was a very So on the way home, person. he turned on the radio. It was nothing but static. And Beth was looking at me like, looking at me like, we're going to die tonight. And I'm looking at her like, no, we ain't. Like, we're, this is not <laughs> happening. I'm not dying with him. <laughs> but me and Jeff, we made eye contact through the rear mirror and his eyes were totally black. And I could hear him sing along to the song that was playing, but it really wasn't on the radio. That literally, like, m yeah, that made, like, shivers got my spine when you said that. Yeah, he was, uh, he was singing the song along to the radio, which the radio was nothing but static. Really? Can you remember the lyrics? Yeah, and it, it was this old-time song. Like, I physically could hear the music playing. Like, I knew that, like, deep down... Thinking about it, yeah, I have I got goosebumps right now, just thinking about it. Because thinking back on it now, I'm like, the song sound very familiar. I don't remember, but the tune was very old. Like, early 1900s, late 1800s. Like, I just, for some reason, like, I knew. And he was just humming along with it. And that's when we made eye contact, like, eye contact. And then, like, after he dropped off her friend... Me and Beth were still in the back seat, and I'm just like, I can't, I need to go home, I can't do this. Like, I felt sick to my... And when we got out of the car, Beth was like, oh, well, we're gonna go back to Elena's house. Well, really, at that time, Beth was living with me. So she was like, we're just gonna go back to the house real quick, you know, whatever. And Jeff looked at us dead in the eye, and he was like, if you don't come back, I'm gonna shoot myself. And we just stared at him, and he's like, I have a shotgun upstairs. I will shoot myself in the head. And it will be your guys' fault. So I get a phone call that night. <laughs> we got home. It was like 2 in the morning. We got home. Me and Beth were looking at each other. Like, we're laying on my bed. Like, we're chilling. Like, we're trying to, like, comprehend what just happened. And I'm like, Beth was like, I'm not going back over there. <laughs> and I'm like, what if he actually shoots himself? It's just like, then let him. And I'm like, I can't do that. Like, I'm not the type of person that would do that. And I'm just like... I asked Beth, I'm like, did you notice his eyes? And she's like, yeah, they were nothing but black. I'm like, they were so soulless. And mind you, Jeff has, like, very, like, blue-green eyes. So for him yeah. to have, like, that much of a shift change with his eye color, it would be that noticeable, I feel like. Because it's not Thinking like... about it makes one to die. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like my brother. My brother has, like, really dark brown eyes to where it almost looks black because my brother's eyes are so dark. But, like... No, Jeff's eyes are, like, like a blue-green kind of color, right, Elena? Yeah, they can shift from blue, green, or gray. Like, they're, yeah. like, you know. It's not anywhere near the color, like, black. But they, yeah, like, so call me and tell me, oh, my God, his eyes changed color. And I was like, what? Thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode. I'd like to thank Chelsea and Elena for helping me and being the guests of this episode. They actually are going to be starting their own podcast, which I'm super excited about, called Two Witch Coven. So hopefully I can post some updates from them in the future. But thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you again soon, spooksters.